Anyway, hello. Um, this is our documentary. So the introduction is: in this documentary, we will be discussing the multiple factors in the sci-fi genre and what ones it uses. Yes, the publicity and marketing strategy of or for the film. So advertising. Advertising. Social what media. does sci-fi use? Sci-fi advertising. uses an awful lot. Very on. Okay, and then um, yeah, um, forums, fan base. Mm-hmm. Uh, the uses of posters and billboards. Mm-hmm. So for our advertising, social media, which would be Facebook, Twitter, um, even Netflix, is, uh, Netflix itself. Yeah. Um, it's just fact of them posting stuff about the movie, like the posters, the trailers. Mm-hmm. And doing it all through social media and advertising. Yeah. Reviewing. Reviewing. So, like, this is reviewing, obviously, the films and those mm-hmm. kind of things. So, we'll go straight to IMDb for this. Yep. Um, so, obviously, that is like. So, how do the sci fi genre use IMDb for their um, reviews? Well, obviously, they're on the site. So, mm-hmm. they're using that as their one of their primary sources of showing off, like, who directed it, who starred in it. Um, and yeah. all those kind of things, what happened, and then they've also got those little, like, um, meta score or whatever it is. Yeah. And what are they called? Like, those little fun facts. And quotes and quotes. Other fun facts, yeah. Yeah, I can't remember what. You was. learn more about the movie. Yeah, so you learn a little bit more about the sort of the movie, the budget that was made to actually, you know, produce the movie. Um, mm-hmm. All those kind of little fun and facts. And you also get um, all the audience responses, mm-hmm. uh, what critics thought about it. And the s- overall scores. Yeah. It was pretty cool. Yep. It was pretty cool. Um, again, YouTube. Yeah. Uh, YouTube people. Uh, Film Riot, Film Slate. All Film them Slate, yeah. Uh, they all show behind the scenes as well sometimes um, with uh, documentaries of everything uh, that happened in the movie, like the, uh, the BTS, soundtracks. Like, yeah. How they made soundtracks. How they even uh, shot the film. So for like Elysium, they even had it on the Blu-ray disc. Yeah, like 40, 40, long, 40 minutes long of behind the scenes footage um, where it was just interviewing like the director yeah. and, you know, those kind of things that for someone who is a massive fan of the sci-fi genre would watch. Yeah. So, so having them behind the scenes is good for reviewings as well. Yeah. Because then people can look at that and understand it better mm. and then go, oh. I'll go on IMDb. Give it a thumbs up. <laughs> yeah, five star. Score. Score. Yeah, chat shows. Chat shows. Okay, so obviously this is like Alan Carr, you know, Graham Norton, Jonathan Ross, you know, those kind of shows where celebrities, um, like film stars and like directors and stuff, will actually go on and um, talk about the films that they've made yeah. or an up and coming movie that's like said to release in the next couple of weeks or something mm. and just. Uh, show a brief clip of it, you know, try and promote it a little bit that way. Yeah. And it's also like their own personal experience on it. Yeah. Um, what was his name? The guy, uh, Commissioner Gordon from Batman. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. He was on and he literally went completely off topic, started talking about how he was the voice for like game stuff as well. Oh, really? That's pretty so cool. you just learn more about the person. So, that's yeah, on the, the, show. the life aspects and stuff. Yeah, that's quite cool. I mean, that's, yeah. I mean, I remember like you learn more about the characters in the yeah, movie. I remember Quentin Tarantino being on um, uh, Graham Norton and just sort of hearing about his life and you know certain mm. like previous things that he's done and those kind of things, things I didn't yeah. know. So, so that's good for the marketing and yeah. publicity. Yeah, yeah, that's cool for the film because that way you sort of engage the audience a little bit more on a personal base. Yeah, whereas the film's very professional. I mean, as soon as you get to know uh, one of the actors, you'll like them better for what they actually do. Exactly. That's why I've got such a big fan basis over Johnny Depp because yeah. he is such a laid back, chilled out guy who just wants to make f- films for the fun of it, not because hmm. he's a douche. And he's hilarious. Yeah. Um, okay, so that pretty much covers chat yeah. shows. I mean, there's other things as well, like um, I've lost my thing, like YouTube as well, like talk to talk site like, with directors and things like yeah. that. Um, because, I mean, uh, what's the company? Uh, like, all the red carpet stuff, they just interview the people e, I'm sure and e they show it up. Like, yeah. Like, the cinema people, the M&M people that they sponsor, M&M or whatever. Yeah. The M&Ms, I meant. M&Ms. Not M&M. Not the singer. Not the Not rap singer, star. The food. The food, yeah. What Scott was eating. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Um, 
<laughs> but yeah, it's just stuff like that. Yeah. Ties um, in with the audience. Yeah. Okay, so uh, production tie-ins. That's a good uh, little analogy. Ties in with the audience. Synergy. Synergy. Between companies. Synergy. Yes. Mm. Okay, so you've got, obviously... Um, you talk about Man of Steel, I guess. Say again? Talk about the whole Man of Steel thing. Oh, yeah, sure. Um, well, again, like Man of Steel is obviously massive, massive product placement. And you can go... Sh- you can pretty much tell the story through the product placement. Um... <laughs> So, for example, like, he starts out at the 7-Eleven, at which point he needs to run over to the IHOP and then, I'll oh, pick up uh, his bottle of uh, Pepsi, at which point he, uh, then Lois Lane, then takes a picture of Superman with her Nikon camera and then mm. shows off the digital zoom factor. It's just ridiculous, like, the, pro- the product place. And it's even, like, the specific shot as well. The only thing in focus is just Nikon, like, yeah. on the camera yeah she's quite close and it's just like it states nick yeah right there like, it's like, like full frame almost oh, right. I, I, I yeah. need some and like on the big like silver screen like yeah. you see that it's like ridiculous so, so there's good product placement yeah. and synergy um elysium 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 used they used uh they use like yeah they leave, like because obviously it's a science fiction futuristic film they obviously still wanted to in keep like real world sort of mm. as if it was adapted it. from real world exactly yeah so they wanted to try and make it look like it was a shot through the future kind of thing yeah. um, and you see that with one of the rich guys in the film who has a spaceship with the Bugatti symbol on it and a Bugatti car is obviously ridiculously expensive it's like one of the most expensive cars in the world and they've, they've sort of done it and they've designed a spaceship the same way that the Bugatti Veyron has been yeah. made so because <clears throat> it was that one character that Literally, he only he only he had it. It was like yeah. gold rims and like red, black and everything. Yeah, and he even has like rich on his name. So it's just yeah, that's product tie-ins as well. Yeah, saying that you have to be rich to own this car as well. Exactly, <laughs> and it's again uh, with um, Iron Man. You know, uh, in all the Iron Man films, uh, Tony Stark always drives a uh, Audi R8, mm. and that's an expensive car as well. Yeah, so there's always like clear cut product placement that you can see with cars. Because no matter what car is in a film, they have to get permission to use. Yeah. If they're going to, obviously, shoot. And even, like, not. with Iron Man, it ties in with, like, the whole Avengers thing. Exactly. And there's, like, comics for that as product yeah. lines. So there's comics, there's cartoons, there's obviously the Marvel Avengers. Mm. Um, like, action figures and stuff. Yeah, so. there's the action figures. And then there's the film franchise. So you've obviously got, like, Iron Man 1, 2. And then, before the third one came out, they released Avengers... Which yeah. was all of them, and then they span off like with um, Team America, yeah. Thor. Uh, so it's like going to be a Hulk to film. even understand the Iron Man franchise, you have to watch the other ones. Yeah, to understand it all. So that's yeah. a good synergy between the whole movies. Yeah, so because in the same car- uh, company, in yeah. Captain America, there's loads of box uh, boxes like crates with Stark written on across the side. Yeah, and it was obviously Tony Stark's father's company yeah. that he started. So it's obviously see that, so it ties in really closely with all that. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Premieres. Um, right, so I'll see if I've got some specifics. Oh, there we go. Yeah, premieres. Okay, so there's obviously red carpet events um, uh, where they'd obviously have the press and uh, a load of like audience members look like taking photos and stuff mm. of and the even the stars as well they turn yeah. up just to watch the movie yeah like, like they for just the first time they turn up to see it see how the film went um the finished yeah. production i suppose um, and then um even after the premieres it gets like uh nominated sometimes as well yeah like the nominated for an Academy straight away Award. that's how they do it all as well like just you see yeah. it and go yeah it's good it's good yeah i like that mm, mm, yeah <laughs> yeah uh let's talk about say. cinemas do it as well yeah, because um, Odeon does it sometimes, where they oh, just yeah? have like a week uh, early release of like. Yeah, they like, did it for the Hobbit, I think. Yeah, when it's premiered, they'll bring it out like an, a week in yeah, advance. Yeah, but it's a bit. It's like a bit more expensive. Yeah, so like tickets, first time tickets to watch it straight, straight away. It's like ten quid or something. Yeah, um, stupid. Um, but yeah, no, that's cool. I mean, if you're really like, if you think you're going to be a massive fan of that film, mm. it gives you sort of early access in a way. Yeah. Um, and again, like with cosplay uh, events, you know. Um, yeah, like Star Trek and everything. Exactly, like, like Comic Con, basically. Yeah, the like, whole thing. Because again, is a premiere like speaking itself. of Marvel again, obviously, you know that's a superhero mm. based thing. It's not quite sci-fi. Because I mean, like, no, the um, it's very similar. the Batman vs Superman. Yeah, like they even showed 
that at Comic Con the trailer. So that's yeah. the premiere itself. Yeah. The first time shown the trailer. Yeah. Was and the cast, thing? you know, the main cast will go yeah, the main and read a few lines, there. ask question, uh, answer questions mm. from the public, and you know. So it all just ties into it as well. Yeah. Um, right. Should we talk about awards? Mm-hmm. Okay. So BAFTAs. So, yeah. What are the BAFTAs before we start? Uh, the BAFTAs are basically uh, the nominees get awarded. Yeah. Um, a, a few selection of people get awarded what they want um, and whatever movie or whatever character or best actor or best role, whatever, mm. they'll get the um, award for it. Yeah. And that also gets put down on the movie like um, title and everything. Like, I can't remember, like No Saving Private Ryan. Yes. All over that, it just says nominated for five awards. Yeah. Even before it was out, it's nominated. Yeah. They've, they've seen it premieres and stuff. Yeah. And like, they've put, obviously, what the film critics have given it, mm. like five stars, four stars, five stars, five stars, you know, all those kind of things. And yeah. then a little quotation like, must see this film, or yeah. laughed all the way through, or, you know, something so like that. that. Like, even that turn, uh, ties in with advertisement as well. Yeah. Because it's just, you see something that says nominated, and you think, oh, it's going to be good. Yeah. Yeah, um, they usually are. <laughs> exactly. So they get nominated for a award by Alicia and things. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Great. So, um, so online presence. Um. Yes. So yeah. Uh, social media sites: Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. The big ones. So basically, uh, they can make like their own profile. Uh, like, what was it? A few movies they even have like their characters. Actually, yeah. on Twitter itself as well. Yeah. As well as uh, Facebook, they have their own profiles. Yeah. That like people could just follow um, like their fan base profile. Yeah, yeah. So, so they, with like, Iron Man, there's um, like Tony Stark will have his own Twitter account and his yeah, own Facebook all account that in stuff. a way, but it won't actually be like that. It would just be a mm. corporate someone yeah. that runs it. But then that all that ties into <clears> the whole <throat> advertising and all yeah. the pre- uh, presence. Yeah. And with YouTube. Um, it's just our, the whole distribution of their trailers and yeah. behind the scenes. So they'll show clips of the movies. In, it's more um, interactive, uh, having all the social media sites and all linked up. Yeah. It just what shows that I've they're actually active itself. Quite recently as well, they've not only been releasing trailers, <laughs> they've been releasing teaser clips, so it's like not even a 30 second yeah, like loads. trailer. I like remember when Batman came out. Yeah. Did you remember seeing that teaser uh, trailer? Yeah. After every advert? Yeah. Like, you see it, and you're like, oh, okay, Batman, Batman. And then it's there again, you're like, what? what? <laughs> yeah. It's, it's like three times within um, like twenty each minutes episode or something. or something. They did it on Channel 4 a lot, Yeah, it just got really annoying. But <laughs> that's a good way of advertising, because I, I looked at that, and I was so excited to watch that. Yeah. And it was such a good film. So next up is how the producer considered the target audience during production. Okay, so this is obviously audience research. Uh, so sort of the uh, the codes and conventions of the show, uh, sci-fi genre, if sci-fi. you will. <laughs> sci-fi. Sci-fi. <laughs> sci-fi. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so Nathan, do you want to sort of talk about that a little bit? Uh, yeah, the audience research. Um, so basically, the producer would look at uh, what the audience wants from many other films and tie it into their own film. Referencing. Like, see, if if I wanted to make a sci-fi, I'd look at something like Star Trek. Look yeah. at how they do it visually, and sort of try and incorporate it into mine. Yeah, like pick out the good bits, throw it in. Yeah, and that's Reference. basically it. it. It makes it more appropriate to the specific audience that you want. Yeah, within the sci-fi genre. Yeah, like lens flares. Everyone wants lens flares. Now, after J.J. Abrams, we're just yeah. like pretty much the inventor of like, lens flares. Star Wars is just the audience research of Star Wars is going to be lens flares now, so everyone's yeah. going to want that. Yeah. It's J.J. Abrams. They're going to want what J.J. Abrams uh, can bring to what it. What he brings to it. So yeah. Yeah. Um, um, yeah. So yeah, yeah. I agree with that. <laughs> yeah. That pretty much sums it up in a what, nutshell. Yeah. Really. So what the producer <laughs> wants people to see, to see yeah. it as basically. Yeah. yeah. So it is sci-fi. It's not like a romance or something else. Yeah. Yeah. Because otherwise that'd be stupid. Yeah. Okay, that's cool. Yeah. All right, next one. Uh, producer response to research. Yes. Mm. So they seem, obviously, <laughs> they've done the research for the movie genre and they followed the codes and conventions of yeah. it. So, like, so that just ties into the audience research, yeah. basically, as well. Um, yeah. yeah. I think that's, that's <laughs> they go hand in hand, really, don't they? Oh, mm. I'm losing my uh, so, yeah, like, District 9, 
uh, for Elysium, he actually, well, he made District 9, didn't he? Yeah. So you look at what uh, was good from that and bring it back in to yeah. Elysium yeah. and add on. That's what I really like about Niall Blumkamp yeah. is the fact that he, you know, he kind of does those things. So that's probably his response to the research was he sees what people want and then he'll just give it to them. Yeah. Like, so that's what you should do. Make people happy. Make like yourself. a gangster. Yep. Yeah, man. All right. That was pretty cool. Audience targeting. Okay, so this is obviously looking at the genre um, and the, well, what, what's specifically in the genre, I mm. suppose. So who's it targeted, basically? Yeah, so the target audience for yeah. that genre. Makes um, sense. So, like, yeah. th- because the sci-fi genre is a very boyish thing, yeah, all, so the, all, like, the, all the sort of the females are they put in the movie sort well? of sexualized a little bit because, yeah. obviously, it's a male target audience, so they sexualize women. Yeah. Because that will And target. explosions. And explosions, because that's mm. what men like. Mm. Domination. Boom. Boom. So, yeah. So, that follows, like, Elysium does that as well. Um, does it? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. But, yeah, Elysium follows it, kind of, in the way of, like, the lens flares, the shaky camera. Uh, yeah. Because District 9 did that, the shaky camera mm. a bit. The space station, yeah. kind of, um, outer space, spaceship, mm. robots. So they just keep, they just aim it for their audience they want, like, teens, yeah. basically. Yeah. The people that are interested in, like, I'd love, I'd love, futuristic I'd, yeah. action. I, like, I love that movies. movies, them type of movies. Yeah. While my dad or my mum would probably sit there and go, what was this? What was that about? Yeah. That one yeah. scene, what was that about? Where I'd be like, there was, was lens flares <laughs> everywhere. It was, was amazing. amazing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, uh, distribution. So, this is like Blu-rays, DVDs, Netflix, yo. I don't know why I was Digital. Saying. Yeah, digital. Video. Versatile. Disc. All right. Well, I don't know the correct terminology, Josh. <laughs> oh, you should, yeah, sure? because um, this is a documentary, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, the uh, digital versatile, versatile disc. Disc. Yep. It's basically extinct now. Yeah, it's it's kind of it's losing <laughs> its Blu-ray. touch, and I think Blu-ray is going to be out the door very soon as well. Yeah, because we've got stream now where we can stream something instantly from the internet. Yeah. So Netflix, like, um, as long as that can get up to you know Blu-ray quality, people are going to eventually stop watching Blu-rays and yeah. buying their rather than like is it Plex? You're on about that app. Where yeah, Plex. You, you can just, just upload stuff. You can just upload stuff onto so it. So you just buy. So buy you your films like yeah. as a as a bitcode like you can with a PC game or something now. Yeah. Where you can just download it to that, you pay for that and that's yours. Mm. So it doesn't it clutters up. And then you can just sell stuff. Yeah. So it's it, less clutter in your less house. Less local files, more virtual digital files. Yeah. Like physically physically none. Virtually but, uh, loads. Digitally loads. Uh, yeah. yeah. That's basically it. And yeah, the distribution of all of these is done loads. Uh, Netflix most times for TV yeah. shows Netflix is really good for that yeah like, you know, like they'll advertise on television yeah and then obviously they'll distribute through their own website and you can't Where get it with, anywhere else uh, DVDs and Blu-rays HBO. yeah they all they, just, they, always, they do like the standard yeah standard uh, edition extended edition like yeah. all that stuff limited editions other yeah. distribution like that and it normally go through Sony as well um, Sony yeah. Entertainment has an awful lot to do with. Well, it's like um, um, DVD, Spider Man, all their Spider-Man. movies. They're all like Sony. Yep. So they they allow you to stream it as well. Yeah. Even Elysium. So you, yeah. Like it's you buy Sony. the disc, you could put it on. Uh, what's it called? Sony. Sony Entertainment. Uh, Ultraviolet. Ultra Ultraviolet. Yeah. yeah. The website. And you just yeah. stream it. Yeah. From your phone or anything. Yeah. So you can have it on. So they're they're devices. basically almost trying to push it out of the yeah. way anyway. Like. Digital streaming that is the way to go, basically. Yeah. So the relationship between audience and film. What's that about, Nathan? <laughs> Thank you, Josh. <laughs> yeah, the relationship between audience and films. Yes. Mm. <laughs> What's that about? So now? yeah, active spectorships <laughs> is the one we're going to be talking about now. Uh, the audience is massively involved into the sci-fi genre. Yeah. The conventions of it, the fandoms, and the fan fiction. Yeah. So that just basically is all of what everyone will bring to the to, movie. Yeah. 
every, everyone that will bring what something to that John community will bring to it all. yeah so for example that film will be made everyone will love that film so yeah. there'll be a relation a huge relationship between that and yeah so people will start dressing up like that people yeah, will like get Comic-Con tattoos like that. you know from that you know people loads hundreds of people have got star wars tattoos um yeah you know, and, and people then, uh, dress up like the characters, like Princess Leia and Luke and Darth Vader and Darth Maul and mm. Darth Bane, who wasn't even actually one of the characters until one of the people, that one of the audience members really enjoyed the film. So they went and wrote their own fan fiction about the thing. They want to make their own story because they like it so much. Yeah, in that world. What are the pleasures of a sci-fi genre, Josh? Um, they're very pleasurable. <laughs> blah, 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 yeah. blah, blah. Um, okay, so they it's are... Lens flares, basically. Obviously, yeah, they're like lens flares, like the typical sequences you get. Mm. So, like, the the panning shot of, like, space and stars and stuff yeah. are, like, moving It's, it's just basically, like, cameras yeah, pan. it's just all the aspects you want to see in a movie. Yeah. That makes you want to watch it, like, makes you happy to watch it. Yeah. Almost. Like, Elysium, mm. I'd watch again just for the fact that it's, like, Halo. Yeah. Uh, but that... See, Elysium was um, inspired by a book. Yeah. And the book also inspired Halo. Yeah. But that's why I like Halo so much. And I'd probably love that book if I read it. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Because it would just remind me of those things. Yeah. Those characters and, like, the whole story to it. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. Yeah. Basically. Basically. Okay. So are we And good? also sequels is pleasurable sometimes. Sequels are pleasurable. like loads of people are gonna go crazy about the new Star Wars movie. Exactly. When that's out. And that's a pleasurable thing. I mean there's been al- al- already there's been so much heat about it, you know, it was on the news that they were auditioning locally. Mm. Um I wanted to be Jabba the Hutt. Exactly. Like yeah, everyone, um, <laughs> everyone wanted to be like part of the characters and like, like thousands like and thousands of people got turned away. Yeah. But at least they're getting the opportunity. Exactly. And that's what would make the movie pleasurable to them. Yeah. Because they could have been a part of it. Or, you know, some of them were a part of it. Even if they're just extras, yeah. you know? Like Warwick. Yeah. He's in literally all the Star Wars movies. Did you know he's in Phantom he's... Menace? Is he? Yeah. See, I remember he see was... that makes Star Wars great for me now. Because I know he's in it like three times. Oh, right. I thought he was only in it And he's once. in Ewok. I know it was it yeah, I know it was in yeah. the Ewok, but I didn't realise he was in it more than that. The bit where uh, Anakin's doing the pod racing up by the stands, he's there by Jabba the Hutt. Well just stood. Around. He's just laughing at them. <laughs> that little cr- that little creepy thing like <laughs> Which is Come boring. Around, but yeah, Come let's around. carry on. Uh, <laughs> frameworks of interpretation. Okay. Interpretation. Well, see, this is multi strand, single strand. Um do you wanna Elaborate yeah. on them, or is like the so hidden? yeah, the hidden meanings within the film. Yes. So within the genre itself. Yeah. So obviously, like, there'll be a clip of something, and it'll yeah, be like, know. for example, it's references basically. Yeah. So like, an alien is getting yeah. killed by a white man. Now that's reference that's a reference to, to black people. Yeah. Killing to, white men. Well, no. It's the other oh, way the other way around. Yeah, yeah. So, so like, either way, reference to race. reference to race. Yeah. Yeah. That's um, why. Uh, Elysium would be that as well. Yeah. Because of the whole Mexico, Los Angeles. That's a single, well, a multi strand. Mm. Because you'd look at it and be like, oh, there's a hidden meaning within it altogether. Multi strand is like more than one storyline going on at once. Oh, so it's single strand. Yeah. But then again, it's multi strand because it's It's then Elysium. It's characters and then, yeah, and then it's like the main. So there's just multiple aspects to the whole movie itself. Yeah. Which ties into the like interpretation of it yeah so it'd be like a multi-strand film would be like something like lord of the rings i know it's not really sci-fi yeah but you know you've what got, it is now you've got multi-strand you've got you Hobbit. know frodo you've got the story of frodo and sam you've got the story of mary and pippin mm. um so and many characters aragon and like legolas you know they all have their own their own yeah their own storylines within like it doesn't just film. exclude characters yeah like there's it not like all the important it's not like there's you. a main character, even though there is, mm. but there's still but like then there never sub is main character. Frodo was never really. Frodo like, was like <laughs> you know, he, he was, was more the, like he was the main guy of the film, but yeah, he was, but it didn't show it like that. It yeah. it did, but he the the journey wasn't about all him. just about Frodo. It was about yeah. you know Sam, um, Gollum, uh, Gandalf, 
yeah. those things. So yeah, yep. That would pretty much uh, that pretty much have covered it. Yeah. yeah, the conditions of reception. You gotta mm-hmm. sit down behind a desk and answer the phone because that's what reception is. Yeah. <laughs> um, what does the sci-fi genre give the cinema an opportunity to do with their advertising? Um, well, obviously, they can advertise the film before mm-hmm. a film that they've the audience have gone to see. Yeah. So, for example, Batman could be advertised before, say, The Hobbit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, so, all the advertisement before films. Yeah. Itself. Yeah. So, they could advertise, like, the full length, like, two and a half, three yeah. minute trailers. Um, also, huge posters. Mm-hmm. Big ones. Like, especially outside. Um, they got the cardboard cutouts. Yep. Posters, you know. Um, so obviously so the cardboard. Doctor Who does that as well. Yeah. But that's um, in cinema. So you can like with the cardboard cutouts and stuff. Obviously, it's like a, it's almost like a three dimensional poster. Um, you know, you see the characters and then the huge backdrop behind it, and you've got, mm. you know, they do it quite a lot of like say the Lego Movie and things, but they have done it with yeah. sci-fi as well. Um, so um, I remember there being one with. I think it was like episode two of like Star Wars or something. So. Yeah, and then there's the uh, the opening times like they extend a movie's length sometimes. Well, not length itself, but the time it will be in the cinema. Yeah, because of how well it's doing. Yeah. Next up is Blu-ray and, and DVD, DVD releases. So, the movies itself, the sci-fi genre, um, whatever movie it is, they will obviously release them too. As yes. Well, digital media. Yes. So there'll be the DVD release, which will be, you know, cheaper than the Blu-ray DVD. Yeah. But you will have less content on it and less quality of image on it. Yeah. Um, but the Blu-ray, um, and again to talk about Elysium, when that was uh, released, they, br- they brought out a Blu-ray version with 40 minutes of extended behind-the-scenes footage on it, and it was rendered in 4K. Yeah. It's like one of the first Blu-rays to be rendered in 4K, which means if you have a 4K television and a 4K compatible Blu-ray player, yeah, it will just work. Um, it will work as 4K, um, mm. which is massive now. Uh, yeah, that's like cinema quality on a home screen. Yeah, um, and also with Blu-rays, sometimes the Blu-ray gets released first before the actual sure. launch, like of the movie. Oh, okay. Well, like right. Google Play do it a lot. Oh, okay, yeah. If you know what I mean. Yeah, and obviously <coughs> Google Play, like, you can... But then like, that's more digital. You can buy movies from Google Play yeah. as well. Um, Netflix, all the streaming, other stuff. Yeah, Now TV. Uh, even uh, Love Film. when it comes to older movies, they're on YouTube now, some of them. Yeah, so just you, can, to watch. you can watch, like, a film that's, like, like legitimately on there. Yeah. Legally. Yeah. Because it's a year thing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, mm-hmm. All right, so next one. Intertextuality... Yep, so the referencing of films. So sci-fi does that a lot. We already yes. talked about Elysium with Halo references. Yeah. The book references, like vis- visually book. referencing. Yeah. Um, but actual characters, I'm not too sure. Yeah, because obviously the style, the style of the setting um, yeah. is it's very similar. It's quite to, similar, but a bit different as well. But the characters are completely different. Um, the characteristics, like, no, when uh, I looked up on IMDb, um, no, he's getting like the whole uh, body suit, the body yeah, suit, the type thing, the, the Hulk skeleton suit. put together on him. It's called the Hulk suit. Um, that is an actual reference to Minority Report. Oh, was it? Yeah. Uh, the fact that they're in a modern world, futuristic world, and they're still using rusty equipment mm. to put stuff, in, like, do surgery. Ah, uh, yeah. That's the whole. It's it's that not, reference. it's not an actual reference like intended. It's just what popped up on the saying, this is what it could be referencing, or it's just the statement like, it's quite funny that. Yeah. It's quite funny that they're in a futuristic world, but they still don't have like, like the newest equipment out. Yeah. yeah. Like Elysium up there did. Like, yeah. He wouldn't have even needed surgery or something. They'll just do something. I love the way they shot that. It was all handheld on Earth, and then everything was done with machinery, like camera wise. Yeah. On um, Elysium. That's cool. So that's like references uh, when it comes to visually, basically. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, that's pretty much it, isn't it? Um, as far as intertextuality goes. Yeah. So what else has been 
It's like reference. What about characteristics? So references of characters, other than other things. Like Avengers is just a huge reference to Iron Man, all the other characters. Well, yeah, because like they're movies. Because yeah. they're all linked together, but it's still referencing each other. Yeah. Because like, they're actually you, their like Iron Man three yeah. references Avengers. Because you need to watch that to understand Iron yeah. Man three, and then. Like you'd need to know who Loki is before you could watch yeah. Avengers. So you'd that's have to watch referencing more. the films itself and characters and stuff. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Mm-hmm. All right. So third um, readings. Third readings. So this is obviously the audience response. Mm-hmm. Uh, so mm-hmm. audience responses like IMDb. <laughs> movie forms yeah yeah movie stuff forms like that. and things um, like obviously how well did the audience respond to yeah. the film like did they prefer it over the previous or you know it's like uh, what does sci-fi genre prefer to use when it comes to their readings yeah so you, in, in there like a movie database just for sci-fi movies or anything like that because they're probably one there's probably one specific thing which sci-fi uses to get its audiences and people together. Mm. But IMD is a good one. Yeah, IMD is a good one. I think it's a good one. Um, Go Tomato or something. And also, they, uh, most uh, movies make their own websites as well, with their own form, forums and stuff like that. So that could be their own preferred reading of what they want yeah. people to... They want people to come to them rather than them researching. Yeah. Sometimes. Because like, you can get biased opinion and things, and it's mm. it's hard so to that's make. like first hand, yeah, preferred readings, yeah, audience responses, yeah, 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 yeah. So now we're gonna go to <laughs> effects. Okay, so the effects is a huge one for yeah. uh, sci-fi, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Um, because you have um, obviously visual effects in it massively. So a lot of it is studio based on blue screens and green screens. You know, it's all chroma keyed. A lot yeah. of the time, purely because they it's want just it ease to. of access as well. Yeah, exactly. Because it's sort of filmed in outer space a lot. They can't go to outer space to film it because it just costs mm. hundreds and hundreds of billions of pounds. So it's like gravity. Yeah. Effects wise, in sci-fi, almost that's like amazing. Yeah. Because they're not actually out in space. But no, but it looks like they actually are. Yeah. Yeah. Like there's nothing you can look at. And go, hold on a minute, then that's actually. Yeah, that. that's fake. That's like fake. if we introduced that movie like 30 odd years ago, mm. people would be like, how did they get in space? Mm. So it's just crazy. <laughs> yeah. So it's just the, the effects, it's just the basic um, aspects of the movie, which uh, people want to see what they want to put in their movie. Yeah, so you could have, say, the codes and conventions of it would be mm. like lens flares again, or explosions, or. Um, yeah. you know, in a spaceship that wouldn't actually have been in the original shot, it would have just been a 3D model designed on, you know, a program that was then yeah. mapped into the stuff. And it's also, it's um, like, the whole colour style of the sci-fi movie is sort of like a blue tintish. Yeah. Or oranges. Yeah. Oranges and blue, they like... Or they like to contrast between the two. So, like, yeah. say the good character will be shown in this light, but then the bad character will be shown in this light. Yeah. Um, like, cause that, like Elysium is basically like when he's down on Earth. There's loads of orange light, like the street lamps and stuff like that. Yeah, and then sort of very, very halogeny, kind of unnatural. And mm. then up on Elysium, and then up on Elysium, it's almost like it's daylight everywhere, yeah. like complete white. LED yeah, lovely, clean, like yeah, LED like even lights. that black room. The effects for the black room the was still soft. Still yeah, but soft looking. It's just lighting it's effects just a black, as well. Black room, yeah. Mm-hmm. Awesome. What's the next one? Fandom? Fandoms. Okay. So the sci-fi genre uses fandoms a lot. Massively. Um, you know, again, Star Trek. Yeah. Massive fandom for Star Trek because you've got... Because um, the TV shows sort of bringing all that on. Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> um, People wanted to dress up like all the characters and yep. just make their own fan base. Make their own fan that. fiction. I mean, that's referenced in Breaking Bad with... Um, Badger and Sandy yeah. Pete talking about <clears throat> how they've got their own episode. And weren't they also like, um, ow, uh, like drawing stuff or something? I think so. Comics, or wasn't Jesse drawing comics? Je- yeah, Jesse had his own comics of, of himself. Yeah, 
So that is a fandom, the fact that he's looked at something and then wanted to be Beats. so much like that that he's drawn himself as a character. Yeah. Like his own character. Yeah. So yeah, sci-fi genre uses a lot of that. Massively. Like, everyone will look to the sci-fi genre and want to be one of them characters. Yeah, it's the main... I think it's the, probably the main source of film and television that would be fandomed um, compared to absolutely anything. Mm. Quite uh, People like to do it for action films again, but I think I think it's better for the audience to sort of dress up as, say, a character from Dead Space or something than it would be to, say, put on a, he's, like, put on a suit and pretend you're James Bond. Like, yeah. It'd just be funner. It's more, it's well, more I mean, energy. You, you don't that. see someone having like a Downton Abbey convention or something. Exactly. <laughs> because because the nothing, telling audience yeah. aren't into that. There's no there's nothing as big as sci fi because you can be any character you want to be. Yeah. Because it's fantasy, like fiction. Yeah. Well not fiction. Fiction? Fiction. Fiction. See? I'm learning. Um yeah. <laughs> Interactivity. Yes. <laughs> that's basically that. Uh yeah, uh sci fi uses a lot of interactivity with all the social media uh, games, a lot of games. A lot of games come out of films, and like, a lot of films are referenced. All the Star Wars games. And there's a there's a good game so good. that you can play on the Elysium website before they brought that film out on. Uh, Were well, they the shooting cinema. down all the people? No. <laughs> well, uh, cool. you basically have questions, and it's like you're applying to join Elysium, like to actually get up oh, there. Oh right, yeah. And you can like, you answer questions to sort of. To find out if you are a worthy client, yeah. To get so it's to like a a fake application. Yeah, it's like a fake. It's, application. it's just an interactive form of a way like. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god! I imploded. Alien. Yeah. Um, it's an interactive form of like um, just giving what the audience wants because I'd like to just. I'm just gonna probably look that. Up and get on. Yeah, if you just type in like, I look at that. And it come up. I'd it's like to just see what it does. Like, it's quite good. even like Facebook does that sometimes. Yeah. So you know, you know the guy that he talks to, uh, it's like as his um, parole officer. Yeah. So like you're speaking to like one of those guys. Um, All right. You just got to answer the questions they ask you. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like uh, there's loads of interactivity with movies on Facebook. Like they also do loads of them once like what character are you in this movie? Yeah, and then, and then, then you little questionnaire yeah. about yeah, that and it'd be cool. Like Harry Potter did that loads well. Yeah. Loads of people do that. Um yes. but yeah, when it comes to games, um usually they do have some mini games on the DVDs and Blu rays. Yeah, sometimes I, I remember Sean the Dead, I think, had one. Has it? No, like the intro scene. I think Shaun the Dead had that as like mm. a mini game. Yeah. I'm not, I don't know, probably not. Mm. But stuff like that you can use. Um, and also just the games itself, like full feature games. Yeah. Like all the Star Wars games were made identical to the story of the actual movie as soon as it was released with it. So then you'd watch the movie and go, oh, I like that. I want to play the character. Yeah. And do it a little bit differently or follow it depending on what the game's like. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, no, I get you. Yeah? Yeah. Because Star Trek made a game as well. And Star Wars. But I've told you loads about Star Wars. <laughs> but yeah, the Star Trek <laughs> 2009 <laughs> game. And it was terrible. But yes. it gave people a chance to play oh, as yeah, the I characters. That. I remember that. But it was terrible. But it's showing that they at least will try with interactivity. Good for children. But yeah, <laughs> social networking, uh, we've covered this loads. Yeah, we have covered social networking. Um, yes, they do it. Um, a lot of characters will have a Twitter now where they will tweet like their experiences or you know, just something yeah. something that their character might say or something like that that wouldn't be on the film. Um, mm -hmm. Or there's pages. It's just like it, it all covers itself what we've already said really. Yeah, like interactivity yeah, no point about it. So... We might as well yeah. talk about the last one then. Pre and post viewing, viewing experiences. experiences. Okay, so, so the, the pre post. post. All right, stop so, it. The pre sorry. post. What would you think the pre post would be? The pre post would obviously be the advertising, the posters, and the, you know those kind of things. So mm -hmm. like 
Uh, when so you, before the when movie's you see out, the little teaser trailer before the even trailer's yeah. released. So it's like, the builder. Oh, oh, like because like recently it's been one like the Guardians of the Galaxy, you know the the new yeah the new from because that bring out like a little teaser trailer. Yeah, but um, even that that sort of sparked. Yeah, because it, it wasn't even mentioned, and then they brought the trailer out, and now everyone's like, "What? What's this? I'm gonna oh, watch that. Yeah. I'd love to watch that." And then the like they'd obviously watch it, go home, and yeah. then it would be the post viewing experiences where they then judge it yeah sit down and mentally. talk about it or on forums social media yeah especially like sci-fi fans yeah because if you're in a group of people convention wise there's going to be like wars yeah like, when it no, comes to this would have happened if this happened yeah nah, nah, nah. like the whole a lot of people get feel very strongly about certain things yeah. in sci-fi because i mean that's just like the viewing experiences did it help like did it affect you in any way as well yeah and did it affect the people around you in any way. Basically. Basically. Because, I mean, like, um, they also, like, do arguments as well, like, what would happen different ways and stuff. Yeah. Like, so... So if this never happened, yeah. like, what would have ha- would have this happened instead? Yeah. Or so that's basically, like, a post-viewing experience discussion. Yeah. Which uh, forums are there for as well. All I can think of is Indiana Jones. Yeah. I, I, was, I, was, I was actually had that in my mind, Big Bang Theory as well. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> literally, literally, yeah. Same thing. Yeah. <laughs> what did I say about that? Um, well, yeah, I mean, like, basically, like, Indiana Jones is this, um, like, you, the the film would have gone exactly the same way without the main character, which I think is ridiculous. Yeah. Like, but it's, it's a good story. Yeah. Still. The Nazis would have found was, the Ark, yeah. killed themselves, even if Indy didn't have like, anything yeah, to do with it. To the be film. honest, like, he was only there just to add a bit more excitement. And he was basically he was the, the camera. Yeah, yeah, he was the guy. <laughs> he was follow. the camera, the following guy. Yeah, he was the guy that's just. It's like just, just straight line. Anyway, should we, we um, should we sum up our <laughs> our findings for the sci-fi genre analysis? Yeah, and there's always going to be references to other media, and I think it's going to increase. Like it will advance as time goes by. Yeah, massively. Like more stuff will happen. Different techniques will appear. Yep. Like, like an- gravity. Another person I like think, J.J. Abrams will come along. Yeah, creating these. And style. I think you know, gravity um, has literally changed the face of the sci-fi industry. Even though it's not a science fiction yeah. film, it's just a thriller, um, really. Yeah, it's just like a, you know, a psychological. Thriller. That's the one. That's the word I'm trying to think of. Uh, you know, because of all the techniques they used to actually get what the images they wanted. So, hmm. who knows now? Especially it, like the sci-fi genre will never. It will. It will always be the same in the aspects of. Space, how it's going to be, and like cozy convention wise. If I said sci fi to you, you'd think space, like, yeah, you know, it'd always Star be that. Star Wars, all that, yeah, style, and then, yeah, it just gets advanced and adapted over time, basically, yeah. And as age goes on, like science fiction brings technology into the real world, yeah, like, for example, in Star Trek, that's they basically had, it's, they had, like, it's innovation for the future as well, yeah. So, like, when we see a creative film like Elysium. We think about the technology that I have and that yeah. that could be then turned into reality. So, for example, in say ten years down the line, we might be having chips put into our brains, even yeah. though it sounds terrifying, to improve on say driving it's rather like, than having um, to learn to drive. We might be able to just download how to learn how to drive. Yeah, because there's like something on Star Trek as well, where there's like so much different technology that Star Trek, the uh, Next Generation, Generation series. Yeah. They had all the futuristic glasses, the watches, the tablets, all of that, which wasn't available then. But yeah, now it's available it's now. Yeah. Like, even they had tablets. Down the exactly. Yeah. yeah. So it's just in- you know, inspiration. Just even the doors that, you know, opened yeah. and closed. Because, I mean, I reckon, like, if, if a tablet like that or something, or futuristic st- uh, sci-fi movies weren't available or weren't ever existed, yeah. like, if the whole sci-fi genre wasn't there, we wouldn't be as technologically advanced as we are now. No. And we wouldn't we wouldn't want to be going to the moon. We wouldn't want to go to new planets cuz where would we hear aliens from stuff like that. Yeah. So it's just sci-fi genre sort of impacts everyone's life. Yeah. In the future. 